Hello YouTube, Takes Cake Tech here. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to bypass the out of box experience with the provisioning package or PPKG file. So with Windows 10, it's fairly easy to get Configuration Designer installed. We'll go here. We'll go, sorry, move to the other screen. We'll go to the Microsoft Store. Once we're in the Microsoft Store, we're going to search Configuration DES. If I can spell configuration designer, here it is Windows configuration designer. And then uh, normally it would be installed, um, but in this case I'll just launch it. So, as you can see, I already have some provisioning packages created. So, in this case, I'm going to create a new provisioning package for provision desktop devices. So, we'll go here and we'll just name it YouTube project. We'll let it set up. So this is where, if you read this, it's kind of saying, so you can do random five serial number. I usually like to do it uh, like this, cm dash serial number, which means to me, change me, uh, and then dash serial. So that'll be the serial number to the device. So it's pretty easy to install. Where I would use this is if you're going to install like a remote management software like Kaseya or ConnectWise Manage, that way when the computer gets installed, you'll be able to sort by CM. We're going to, we're not going to configure this device for shared use. If you check this box right here, remove pre-installed software, what actually happens is, is the, the device will re-image itself before it sets it up and goes through the out-of-box experience. We'll hit next here. Um, set up the network. I don't know why I bypassed that, but uh, this is where you could join wireless. So if you if you didn't have a network card in your device, you could say the net the network ID would be like you know your Wi-Fi, your Wi-Fi name, and then a, you know WPA2 personals, and you'd enter the Wi-Fi password. But I'm not going to set up a network here because it is going to be an Ethernet device. Account management, this is kind of cool here. You can enroll in Active Directory. So if you have a domain controller on site, you can enroll in Azure AD, or you can just use a local account, which is what I'm going to use here. I'm just going to create YouTube, and I'll make the password YouTube as well. So that's what the username of the device will be. I'm just going to check one more time here. OK, that's off. You can add applications in here, add certificates things like that. But this is what I always do when I start my first provisioning package is I get it about this far. And then if you see down here in the lower left, you can see switch to advanced editor. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to the advanced editor now. And then this is if you read this, you can view and configure all possible settings in the advanced editor. But once you switch, you can't open this project in the simple editor again. So I like to do this part because I know it will always get past the out of box if, if at least that is checked. So we're going to switch to the advanced editor now. So in the left pane here, you'll see all of these. I don't know why it's telling me that the wireless LAN here is not configured correctly. Let me just. Uh, Let's see why it's yelling at me. We'll just put test in there. It shouldn't. I think it's because I, I was showing you the wireless. You don't need to do that. The wireless LAN. Um, oh, here's why. Because not configured. There we go. And then um, auto connect. Hmm. Oh, here we go. There we go. So I just deleted the, the wireless there. So now it's not going to yell at us. So you can see everything that's configured on the right hand side and all the settings you can configure on the left hand side. So some stuff that is very helpful here is so you can see Microsoft has all these. All the documentation is down here, just basically like it would be on their web page. Country code, extended capabilities. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. I really don't use it too much for anything else. Let's see if we can set the time here. Mm, no, it doesn't. So some, as you can see, some of the settings aren't really that helpful, which is why I don't really use this too much. I'll show you what I would use it for every time. And that's under provisioning commands here, like you see. So provisioning commands, 
and then uh, we'll do primary context. And then we're going to name, un so this is where you can install software. So I'm going to install two pieces of software. We're going to install Google Chrome. And then we're also going to enable Ansible in this as well, because that's the tool that I like to use to configure Windows devices. So now we'll bring this up here and we'll do uh, Google Chrome uh, MSI download. Download browser for your business. So Google Chrome download 64 bit. We'll download this, accept and download. This will be a zip file too. So we're gonna go into this zip file once it gets downloaded. So open it when done here. I'll bring it over here to show you everyone. So installers, and we just want the Google Chrome standalone enterprise installer. So I'm just gonna move that to uh, a, a spot here. We'll move it to C temp where I have a whole bunch of files. I'm gonna delete all these though. We'll paste it there. So we have one file that we're going to use to install. And then I'm also going to search your Ansible setup for Windows. Set up Windows host. I think this is what we need. We'll see here. WinRM listener. Here we go. I'll keep looking. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? We'll find it. Oh, right here. OK. So as you can see here, it's actually downloading this file. So what I'm going to do is go to this URL. You can tell here, just if, I can explain this PowerShell if anyone's curious, but we're going to go to this web page here. This is the raw file of it, because if you try to download this, uh, it will not work very well because it's trying to reach out to the internet. So now I'm going to move, I'm going to save this into my C temp as well. Configure remote remoting for Ansible fairly easy. And then we're going to also copy, well, we'll leave this page open because we're going to use the same command there. So now we have our two, our two programs, I guess you could say that we want to install. You could, you could put a whole bunch of stuff in here. Like I said, I like to keep it fairly simple because when I'm provisioning computers, I like to use Ansible for other reasons, which I will describe in my next videos. Just as easier to configure files that way. So now we'll open up Google Chrome here. And we're going to say command file. This is where we need to find our MSI file, which is right here. So now we have our MSI file loaded. With that, we're going to go to command line. So we, it's a MSI EX, uh, we'll, we'll do it like this, cmd.exe forward slash C for close when completed. And we're going to do M MSI EX ec forward slash i for install then we're going to take the name of that file which is kind of cool here because see all we need is to do that we just need to say the file name and we'll ex I'll explain that here in a little bit too about kind of why that's the case so but it it basically puts it in there and then um makes it so that it doesn't have to be you don't have to have that file anywhere other than the provisioning package so it's pretty, pretty nifty. So now we're going to do this MSI commands. I'll open up command prompt here to show you. So we'll go to CD, C temp, and we're going to do Google Chrome. We're going to hit it with a backslash question mark so we can see the commands. I'll bring those over here. So MSI EXCC forward slash I forward slash I right here, forward slash I for product MSI. And then we're going to do quiet because we're not going to have any user interaction. And then we're also going to do no restart, just in case it won't, it, this package shouldn't prompt for restart, but it's very possible that it might. So just, I always like to do that. So, and this is continue install. What this will do is if it fails, it'll just continue the install. Um, we're not going to worry about that one either. And then now we're going to go grab our PowerShell file. So this is where, where I was talking about, we need to remember that web page we were at. So we'll take this back over here and we'll copy this. The execution policy bypass is important. That's uh, It runs as, as an administrator, so the bypass will make it so it runs no matter what. Whereas if, for example, the computer's execution policy is set to restricted, it would not run this file. So just make sure you do this. And then we're gonna use our configure Ansible file. 
So that's it, because instead of using the file name variable, we're just calling the file by name. So fairly easy. Then we'll just do the last part here. We'll export my YouTube project provisioning package. We'll say we're an OEM or IT admin. We're an IT admin, sure. And this is version one. And uh, we'll hit next. If you encrypt the package, it just basically makes you use a password when you, when you set up the provisioning package. And it also encrypts the stuff in there because it actually loads all the files as you'll see the size of it once I'm done here. So we'll hit next. We're not gonna put it there. We're gonna put it in the C temp directory and then we'll name it just the YouTube PPKG and then we'll hit next and we'll build our provisioning package. So we'll open that C temp directory and here's our PPKG file. And as you can see, it's pretty much the same size as this right here which is what I was talking about, how it puts all the files into the PPKG file. So that's all you need when you set up a computer. Now I'm gonna switch over to Hyper-V here and um, we'll continue with what it actually does, the power of the PPKG file. Okay, I'm back here and I'm actually gonna show something else. This is a PowerShell command. This isn't needed for anything other than Hyper-V. What it's gonna allow me to do is take that PPKG file and put it in an ISO file. I'll upload this to GitHub later to where you can create the ISO file, but with a PPKG file, you just have to have the file accessible from the out-of-box experience. So normally, when you set this up and you're sending it up on a new computer, this file here, this PPKG file, would go on a, would go on a uh, flash drive. So you just plug the flash drive in and away you go. But in this case, oh, where did it all go? Okay, in this case, we're gonna use PowerShell here to do it for us. Okay, and I'll explain this as I go with, with, uh, with Hyper-V. So I'm gonna bring everything up here. Let's get uh, the Hyper-V menu as well as uh, the virtual machine. So here we go. So we have the virtual machine, we have Hyper-V. This is kind of confusing. I'm, I'm gonna explain it like it would be a normal computer instead of with Hyper-V. So I'm gonna go into the settings. I already have a DVD drive. So I'm gonna change from my Windows ISO to C ISOs, and we're gonna use our PPKG. So this is like, this is me plugging the flash drive into the computer. So instead of, instead of me mounting the ISO on Hyper-V, this would be you physically plugging in the flash drive with that PPKG file on it. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna hit apply. Weird, it didn't show up right away. So let me explain now. So when it's like this, I'm gonna hit the Windows key five times. Normally when you plug the flash drive in, it'll come up. Sometimes it doesn't, but if you hit the Windows key five times, when you're at this screen, one, two, three, four, five, maybe not, one, two, three, four, five. I might have to go to the next screen here. There we go, we did, we had to go to the next screen. So you have to get past that first screen. And then we're going to do install provisioning package, continue and it, it found the provisioning package that we put on the flash drive. Here's the two scripts that we set up. So it's applying, pending, pending here. Give it just a moment. Now we'll get to see the power. So basically what just happened there is it ran all the stuff that we did. It should reboot and run the commands. You could take the flash drive out at this time, but in this case, since it's Hyper-V, it's just mounted with an ISO. So here we go, we'll run the scripts here. The first one was installing Chrome. So we'll let it install Chrome. This shouldn't take very long. The files, you know, about 60 megs, I believe. So this one will take just a few seconds to do. We'll stop the video here while it, while it runs. All right, so that finished up. Now we're on the second script here, zero and one, good old computer knowledge. So we'll uh, let this one run. This one's the Ansible PowerShell script that's running as a bypass. So here we go. Oh, weird. Setup complete. So now we open it up. YouTube is the password. Remember, that's what we created in the PPKG file. Hit enter. We'll log in. Let's see if it all worked. Let's make it large so we can full screen it and make it look good. Come on. Oh. Let's see if we did it. This might take several minutes. So like I said, 
you can put a whole bunch of stuff in the commands of the provisioning package. For example, I've used in the past power settings, Firefox install, Ninite Pro. I'm trying to think the list goes on and on, but I've, I've sort of shifted away from creating provisioning packages for every single computer deployment I do and started using a configuration tool afterwards because like you saw, the provisioning package can't be edited in real time. You can't use GitHub, you can't use source control. So you're basically just holding these files that could have very important stuff on there. And if you don't have the file, you're kind of SOL, right? So it's easier to use GitHub with Ansible or Kaseya scripting or remote management scripting or, you know, just getting the computer past the out of the box. It, as you could tell, it only took like five minutes to just, you know, go through the basic setup. So you could just do that and not install any applications and save yourself some time. Here we are. Look, we have Chrome. It's working. Woohoo! It's all up and running. So we did it. Fairly simple, basic. If this helped you at all, if you have any questions, feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks. Have a good day, YouTube.